Hello everybody and welcome back to Newegg TV. I'm Steve and today I'm gonna to do an overview on this AMD AM1 based mini ITX motherboard from Azeroc. That's model number AM1B-ITX. And at the very beginning of this review, I did mention that this is an AM1 socketed motherboard, and that is important because it's using AMD's new Kabini CPUs, uh, now the, or APUs I should be calling them, accelerated processing units. Uh, but something you guys should know is that they're now gobbling up everything on top of that chip, so it's not just graphics now, it's also going to be uh, the CPU cores, which it already had, and on top of that, the chipset. So it's, it's, it's basically an SOC at this point. Also, it's upgradable because it's not ball grid array, it's not gonna be soldered in directly so with AM1 socket, you actually remove that and make it upgradable. You'll have access to Athlon and Sepron uh, CPUs, so that's going to be excellent. Also, it, it does it incorporating up to 128 Radeon cores. Uh, that's also going to give you GCN support. But yes, that is extremely important. So let me flip to the back and show you a little bit about ASRock's full spike protection, which is a three-part style protection. First, it's giving you surge protection in case you get some spikes, just like this little graphic has here. And obviously that's gonna be damaging to the components on this motherboard uh, in terms of electrical spikes. Then lightning protection in case, uh, I, guess, I guess in case something around your area gets struck by lightning, specifically the lines that are carrying your, your internet and your ISP would have probably some protection on the cable modem side or the DSL side. But in case it gets all the way through and it damages your system, then this is gonna be some additional protection for that. On top of that, we also have ESD protection or electrostatic discharge protection. They're protecting the USB, the LAN, and the MOSFETs all just in case there's additional surges uh, in, in your system due to electrostatic discharge on the motherboard from tapping it when you have a lot of static on your, on your body. So moving forward, they also have an all solid com capacitor design that's gonna increase the life of this motherboard. But let's go ahead and open it up and take a closer look. All right, we're gonna start off with the accessories inside the box. First off, there's a manual, which is excellent because it has a block diagram in there. Thank you very much for that, Azerac. Also, there's, they're providing for you the CD with the drivers as well as some Norton, uh, some Norton software as well on there. But you're definitely gonna to wanna to go to Azerac's website and AMD's website in order to download the newest drivers for this particular motherboard. Uh, then, of course, we have an I.O. shield, uh, pretty straightforward here, just standard I.O. shield, and a couple of SATA cables, two to be exact. One of those is 90 degrees, so let's take a look at the board. All right, and finally, here we are at the motherboard itself, the main event. So as you can see, the look at the motherboard, pretty much using uh, black socket slots here, and uh, other than that, a chocolate brown uh, to the PCB, where the traces seem to be the brownest area of the board. I'll flip that back around to the front again. I'm gonna get started here on the very bottom right-hand side where this PWM FAM header is. It's great for uh, fans if you wanna make sure that you have the quietest possible cooling solution, uh, as long as you have a PWM fan that's connected to that, of course. Uh, moving right along, we do have a PCIe full-length PCIe Gen 2.0 slot that is X4. Uh, so keep that in mind, it is full length, but it's only wired up for four lanes. And then right above that, we do have a TPM header. That's great if you wanna have a little bit more security, as long as you have that module to connect into it. Uh, for the front panel, we have a USB 3.0 header, and as well as USB 2.0 here, here, and here headers. And then of course we have the BIOS chip, and that's great that it's socketed here because you could actually remove that and get a replacement should something happen to this BIOS. If we move right down here to the bottom left, we also have the HD uh, front panel header that's gonna be connecting the audio to everything else. And actually if I turn the board a little bit more my direction, I could probably see that better without all the reflections. Here on the right hand side, we have four different SATA Rev3, six gigabit per second, uh, ports and then of course at the very top here we do have a very small header and that's going to be for the speakers so this way you can connect in a speaker if you had that connected to your chassis or one of those really small ones that you usually just connect in. Uh, then we have the front panel header here for all the connectivity uh, for your switches, your LED uh, and, and the like. Then of course we have the, the ATX 24 pin header here that's for the main power for this particular motherboard and then moving right along, before I knock it off this little stand, moving right along to the dim slots here, we have two dim slots and they are both going to support a total of 16 gigabytes of DDR3 
memory that is, of course, single channel memory with this particular board. Uh, and it is officially supporting up to DDR3 1600 mega transfers per second. Uh, of course, if you, if you can manage to get it to clock a little bit higher than that, the APU is going to take full advantage of that. So moving right along to the actual A1 socket. And once again, like I mentioned before, this is a socket that you can actually uh, instant remove a Combini APU into it. So if you're using something like the Athlon 5350, that's going to provide you with four CPU cores. And if you plan on using the onboard graphics, you're going to be able to utilize the 128 uh, Radeon cores, and that's going to also provide G GCN support as well. So I'll move right up here along the top area. We have a couple more fan headers. One is PDL, PWM and one is standard. We also have a CMOS uh, clear jumper as well as the CMOS battery. Let me go ahead and flip that around to the front so you can get a look at the I.O. So starting here on the top left, we have two USB 2.0 ports as well as a PS2 port. And we're, giving, we're getting a D-sub as well as DVI as well as HDMI for the onboard video. So keep that in mind for that Radeon R3 graphic support. You will be getting three different ones including a D-sub uh, and uh, surprisingly enough an LPT port. So you are getting the legacy parallel port for uh, printers. Uh, that's probably going to come in handy if you have older, older printers in your household and you just want to be able to utilize those. D-sub is probably going to come in handy if you end up turning this into a server or something like that. Uh, but aside from that, we also have uh, two USB 3.0 uh, uh, ports as well as the NIC, which that is being provided to you by Realtek's R8111 uh,1GR LAN chip. So then we also have audio, which is just three ports here. We have the in the out as well as the microphone in and that's all being provided for you by the Realtek 5.1 channel HD audio chip that's the ALC 662. All right, everybody, that's going to wrap up this overview of this AM1 socket motherboard from ASRock. If you guys like what you saw today, don't forget to click the like button. And if you haven't already done so, click subscribe to any of our various YouTube channels. And we will see you guys very soon.